the Library Bill of Rights in Interpretation. The Library Bill of Rights is a guideline and a promise to communities from their libraries that intellectual freedom will be honored and protected. This right that every person can seek and receive information from all points of views without restriction is the access that libraries have made their mission. There are six guiding principles that make up the Library Bill of Rights. These are the cornerstones that support intellectual freedom. Take one away and that freedom becomes restricted. It is important that resources are available for the community, for their interest, information, and enlightenment, no matter the reason, no matter the topic. The library should provide and present resources for the whole community. These resources can be traditionally physical items like books and magazines to more modern resources like databases, online content, and programming. These resources need to be accessible no matter the characteristics of the characters in the book, the life experiences of the presenters, or the opinions and beliefs of the creator. Not only should we provide the material that fulfills the community's interest, information, and enlightenment, but we should provide the resources that present multiple viewpoints, both historical and current. We do that by providing diverse collections that reflect the community. These resources provide mirrors and windows for patrons to see themselves and others. We also have balanced collections that reflect a diverse content. Now that doesn't mean we need to purchase an equal number of resources that reflect multiple viewpoints, just that we have an equitable amount. I do not need to purchase one liberal leaning book for every conservative leaning book in the collection. We just need to make sure that we have books on both. To ensure access for intellectual freedom, we must make sure that we challenge censorship at all levels. Traditionally, people think of the censorship that libraries face coming from outside the organization. It can come in the form of an official complaint requesting material be pulled from the shelf. There can be pressure from within the organization or even within personal view that can lead to self-censorship. We may want to avoid subjects we fear may be hurtful or inappropriate to members of our community, but we must be aware that not covering a subject matter out of fear could be infringing on the rights of someone to access information or of interest to them. We also want to make sure that we partner with those that share the mission that libraries have when it comes to intellectual freedom and access. Libraries cooperate for free expression and access. We want to find partners that will not only support the mission, but advocate for the library and its value to others. Those partnerships can come in encouraging community members to participate in National Library Legislative Day to advocate for library funding. Seeking individuals to serve on a library board that will help write library policies that support intellectual freedom. Or recruiting diverse volunteers that represent the community. Libraries also must reach out to those who oppose attempts to restrict resources or limit access to any member of the community. Providing the resources that the community wants and needs that portray diverse points of view doesn't work if there are members of the community that cannot access it. The library is for all, regardless of age, gender, or race. It is not our place to judge who can access our resources and what is appropriate for our community. To ensure the access is available for all, we must be aware of potential barriers of access. There are physical barriers of getting into the building, being able to use a mouse at a computer, and not being able to hear a speaker. These barriers can be addressed by making sure we are ADA compliant. We see virtual barriers in computerized reading management programs that prevent a patron from using resources deemed above the patron's level, or to use the internet filters that block protected speech. Both can be avoided by not placing restrictions to access. There are economical barriers that impede access through blocked accounts due to overdue fees. We are seeing more and more libraries moving towards a fine free operation to remove this barrier for those who are impacted the most by it. And then there are personal barriers. The barriers created by adding labels or organiz organizing collections by ability or age level 
labeling movies with the MPAA rating system. These labels can stigmatize resources and lead to embarrassment by the patron who would like to use that resource. Sometimes that personal barrier is that the patron is embarrassed by the topic that they are seeking information on. These barriers can be avoided by not using a labeling system that challenges intellectual freedom and offering self-checkout stations to protect the privacy of patrons. Finally, we need to remember that freedom of expression is a human right and the foundation of our self-government, and that intellectual freedom needs free speech and the right to receive information. The availability of meeting rooms and exhibit spaces is key to that expression. Libraries are a public forum to exchange ideas and information and to provide a broad spectrum of opinions and a variety of viewpoints, even if those ideas and opinions are controversial. This public forum can be limited, but it does need to be open and inclusive to the use of the space. If one type of group is allowed to meet to discuss activities, all types of groups need to be allowed the same type of access for discussion. The Library Bill of Rights apply equally to all libraries. It is this guideline and promise that guides the library mission, goals, and needs of the community it serves.